Hey people of the VC, it's Andy Cloudy Mulder. As is tradition on my channel around this time of year, I um, do a video of my annual birth dig haul. Basically on my birthday every year I usually take the day off work and I go out record shopping around Edinburgh. This year obviously everything's a little bit different. We're, um, we're on lockdown again. All the record shops are shut. And in fact, since this time last year, I think at least two are shut permanently. So um, it's not very good uh, outlook on the horizon for local digging for me. Um, but still, I like shopping for records and I like it on my birthday. And I always um, save up and give myself a really good budget for going out and get some stuff. But for this year, I had to change tax slightly. So... This is the Birth Dig Lockdown Edition. Um, between um, things that uh, I've been bought by family, friends, um, and, and as well as some of the budget I've put aside for myself, um, so Amazon, Discogs, eBay, Bandcamp, um, it's it's all in here. Uh, I've had a good splurge, and um, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but this year was a, a significant uh, birthday shall we say so I uh, had a little bit more funds available and uh, tried to have as much fun as I could without actually getting out and finding stuff so without further ado I'm going to jump in and show you what I got and I was a very very lucky boy and I'm very grateful for those who um, uh, who who gave me presents this year it was absolutely fantastic so uh, first up uh, the only non uh, vinyl thing I'm going to show in this uh, video is uh, I've picked up the uh, Temple of Rock, Michael Schenker's Ten Temple of Rock on a mission live in Madrid. This is the uh, double double CD, double Blu-ray uh, edition um, recorded in Madrid when in 2015. Not watched the uh, the, the Blu-ray yet, but the uh, CDs sound really, really good. Big fan of uh, Michael uh, Schenker's Tenkel, Temple in Rock period. Uh, I think it's is it Doogie White on vocals. I think it is. Um, yeah, Doogie White on uh, vocals. Really love his uh, sort of mature rock style. Uh, the write-ups in here are really good, but the, the Schenker one is... Um, particularly interesting he's he certainly likes to take a bit of a dig at um both the scorpions and the ufo and the fact that he was like the most fantastic thing that ever happened to them i love michael shank or whatever but it just seemed really strange that he would go there uh in this uh write-up but um really really good cd set and i'm looking forward to watching the uh the blu-rays that go with this as well 22 tracks in total uh love live stuff really looking forward to listening to that now a lot of things in here or most things in here i've uh, maybe only heard once or twice um being online um rather than going out and digging on one day this is bec this is from across like you know two and a half weeks of uh shopping for stuff online and some of the stuff only came in today which is why i'm a about a week later than i would normally do this video and i've been doing a video like this for the last sort of, three or four years documenting this special day um so first up from my uh, sister, and my sister and I are poles apart when it comes to music, but uh, thankfully my wife pointed her out to my wish list. Uh, so she sent me and finally got the uh, Testament uh, Titans of Creation release, really high up on a lot of people's um, lists for last year, but I was kind of holding off to a decent price for the vinyl and I ended up getting it for a very good price uh, thanks to my sister she got it for me. lovely stuff um, I really really like this album I think Side A with Children of the Next Level uh, World War 3 and Dream Deceiver is a absolutely fantastic side of uh, an album um, the others are kind of less memorable to me because there are a few Chuck Billy death growls in here and I'm not the biggest fan of those at all, to be honest with you. The music, absolutely fantastic, but I could do without the deathy growls, but that's that's testament these days. But overall, absolutely you know, really good album, really great album. Um, that certainly would have been in my top 10, I think, for 2020. Uh, 
The next one, which not many of you will be interested in, but uh, I'm going to show it anyway. This is the wedding present. It's the BBC Mark Riley Sessions Volume 4. I have the other three. And uh, being a BBC recording, it sounds absolutely fantastic. The wedding present to the uneducated of you out there is a, um, a band from Leeds that kind of play indie alternative rock. And they've been going for 30 plus years. And I've been into them for 30 plus years as well. Um, absolutely love them. It's my um, it's one of those bands I go to when I'm not listening for metal. Wants something maybe a bit more, um, a bit, a bit different. I was going to say melodic, but uh, they've got had changing styles all over the, uh, uh, all throughout their career, and um, I love all of it. Fantastic stuff. But back to the metal. Uh, so the next up, I've got a bunch of Dio. Um, the first two were a kind of a present to myself but also courtesy of paddy power bookmakers i had a i have a little flutter every week an accumulator on uh the uh, uh english football league and um uh, just before my birthday i got a, a a nice little win came in uh so i picked myself up a couple of the 2021 dio reissues uh holy diver now i have an og of this but um I couldn't pass up getting a fantastic sounding uh, 2021 release, and it does sound fantastic. It's pretty true to form uh, for the um, the original release. The only difference between this really is the artwork is a little bit more washed out. I do prefer the artwork. It seems a little bit sharper on the original release, and there's a, a Vertigo um, uh, label down here in the corner that they've, they've stuck on as well. Other than that, the presentation is fantastic. Uh, the one that I'm uh, really, really excited to hear, though, is Strange Highways. Now, I'd never listened to this all the way through. I was familiar with one or two of the songs on here, but I'm um, finally glad to be able to grab a, uh, a 2021 repressing on vinyl. What's that? We got here. Okay, that's the digital download. You're not having that. I am. Um, really cool stuff. So... Everyone knows Holy Diver, so I won't get that one out. I think Strange Highways is... It's a double album, actually. Yeah, it's a double album, but it's not a, uh, a gatefold. Uh, so we've got uh, labels there and the uh, Vertigo swirl on the back. Uh, these sound fantastic. If you're looking to get any of the 2021 reissues, and it's most of the uh, 80s stuff going to early 90s, then I would thoroughly recommend them. Um, Holy Diver is the only one I'm going to double up on. I have OGs of the others, and I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't need to get the repressions of that, but um, they do sound superb if you're looking at the 2021 reissues. Now, also from Dio, um, my uh, good friends, fantastic friends, um, brilliant friends at Contact in Blood, uh, Metal Mickey, The Rock Scout, and uh, Mark G with a C. Um, they they surprised me. They sent me a, a Amazon gift card for my birthday. Thank you very much, fellas. It was really really a, a big surprise and a lovely surprise as well. And um, I did try and buy some headphones uh, or put it towards some headphones, but that kind of didn't go well with Amazon. I had to send them back. So I ended up um, picking up a couple more Dio albums, and why not? Uh, these are 2020 reissues. This is the 1996 to 2004 studio albums uh, reissues. I'm still, I'm pretty much unfamiliar with uh, sort of post 2000s. Dio, again, I've heard one or two songs, but I've never heard the albums. These arrived today, so I've not really given them too much of a listen, but um, they're all gateful. So this is uh, Killing the Dragon, originally from 2002, as I say, 2020 reissue. This is not the one that came with the lenticular artwork that uh, I've seen uh, Darcy show. It does come on, uh, it comes on uh, black wax and uh, gatefold with the, the lyrics. Uh, sounds fantastic. I haven't heard this album all the way through for the first time today, just once. It's fantastic. There is the alternative artwork on a, just a, a, an inner sleeve. With the, the cover as well, but uh, not the lenticular one, <clears throat> which I'm fine with. It's the music I'm after, after all. Um, but that's superb. And uh, I've just finished spinning 
um, Master of the Moon. Uh, again, I've never heard this all the way through before. It's perhaps not as um, catchy and epic metal sounding as uh, Killing the Dragon, but it's it's moodier, uh, but it's still undeniably dear. And I'm so delighted to, to have these in the collection. This one doesn't come with alternative artwork, but it does come with a, a, uh, a signed, in inverted commas, uh, picture of Dio and the uh, album artwork repeated on that side. I say lyrics in the middle. Uh, sounds again absolutely fantastic. Uh, black wax. Custom labels. Um, I am one of my goals for this year, I think, is to certainly pick up the rest from that series. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see, that's the series there. 1996 to 2004, the studio albums, and maybe um, Lock Up the Walls from the 2021 release as well. I think that, that would, and then I'd have everything I need from Dio. But um, thanks again, chaps. That was um, totally unexpected and a fantastic surprise, and uh, I'm real glad to have those courtesy of you guys. Um, next few are eBay purchases. Um, I got quite lucky. Um, whatever my budget was, I have spent it incredibly well, even if I do say so myself. And um, I, I bid on a few auctions and got them for minimum bids, so I was able to actually end up getting more than I bargained for. The first uh, lot uh, was a couple of Dio albums. Uh, Dio. Udio. 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 <laughs> uh, Animal House. Obviously from, what, 1987. This is a US pressing on BMG. And um, Fearless World. Um, I'm kind of unfamiliar with uh, Udo's releases. Again, I've heard the odd track, but uh, I've never had any of his uh, albums before, certainly on vinyl. Um, this is absolute killer. So uh, all the songs are written by Accept, and for what I've heard, and you've probably heard many times on people's channels that he he left Accept, but basically they uh, they gave him the, the next album, and, uh, and and he delivered on it. That sounds absolutely superb. This one I've heard, uh, Fearless Wills, I've heard is maybe not so good, or doesn't get such amount of love. This is from 1990, but having played it to or two or three times now I really really enjoy it yeah it's a lot more uh, a lot less accept uh, sounding and a little bit more commercial sounding but it is it is 1990 after all and everything will sound like that but um, the condition of this one alone is is unbelievable it's probably one of the best um, condition vinyl from anything I have from 1990 and, and previously is almost unplayed uh, absolutely killer stuff and I'm really really, really enjoying this one um, obviously still prefer Animal House but um, yeah that was great and that was that was a single auction that no one else bid on so um, the cost of the two of them together was uh, fantastic Great one. I'm not sure I would have bid higher on it to be honest with you. So if I hadn't have got the minimum bid, I'd have uh, uh, I'd have missed out. But there we go. Another minimum bid. Uh, Omen, and this is Escape to Nowhere. Um, I only had one other Omen album. Uh, this is a, a later one. This is 1988 on Metal Blade Records. And again, I think I got this for a good price. Not super cheap. Probably about eight quid. But uh, the inner sleeve is kind of perfect. Um, pictures of the band and uh, say on metal blade as well. Um, but this is fantastic. This is all right. It's kind of traditional heavy metal. It's kind of a bit US power metally, uh, but it's also got the guitar noodling as well. It's it sh shreds. It's it's sh shreddy metal. Let's call it shreddy metal. There we go. Uh, but that, I, I just love that picture there. That is just so uh, 1980s America, is it not? No one looked like that in the UK. I'm not sure what, what I would have done if I bumped into somebody who looked like that in the UK at the time. 
Uh, another album which I didn't expect to win as a minimum bid uh, is Venom's Ein Klein Licht Music, which I think means a little light, light music, if my memory serves me well. Um, this one is not in perfect condition, it, it certainly smells <laughs> like uh, it's a 1980s record. The gold is fairly well worn. There's a bit of ring wear around the outside. I certainly wouldn't have gone higher than the minimum bid, but um, I'm delighted that I did actually win it. There we have the guys, Kronos, Mantos, Avedon. And um, as live albums go, not the most fantastic sounding album in the world, but um, yeah, I'm delighted to have it. Slowly but surely picking up some more Venom in the collection. I do enjoy them. I think they're a fun band. Uh, I, I don't get when people get really uptight about them when you call it, when you say they're not a black metal band, but there's, there's nothing black metal about them. They have a song called Black Metal. They may have been, or they did inspire bands to be raw, harder, heavier, but you know, at the end of the day, these guys are not black metal. And it's on Neat Records as well, which is usually Neat Records stuff um, goes for silly prices. So really, really surprised to find uh, this and no one else bid on it. So um, yeah, some live Venom, well worth checking out. Uh, another minimum bid win. So this is a Witchfind and Cloak and Dagger. This was this is the uh, back on black reissue from 2015 originally from what 1983 i think it was this was the kind of like which finds uh return um it's a good album but it wasn't probably that good for 1983 um bands had moved on which find hadn't really moved on that much in terms of their sound um some labels but uh, really, really glad I got this. I mean, this was, uh, I think it was about nine pound I was getting it for. And um, yeah, really, really cool stuff. New wave of British heavy metal. Uh, probably sounds better now, as I say, than it did in 1993. Uh, now these two I got off uh, Discogs, both Lizzie Borden. This is the debut album. Um, I'm really new to Lizzie Borden and I am loving it. This is, uh, love you to pieces and uh, their debut album and this is absolutely superb I, I love this album i've played this over and over again and this this cost me about eight pound fifty it was brand new it was sealed it's a metal blade uh, reissue uh, hard stock or heavy stock uh inner with the lyrics and uh polyline sleeve as well Black vinyl. I, can't, I couldn't follow. I couldn't believe it because I was looking at. I was looking at the originals and they were creeping up in price. And I was looking at these reissues and they were kind of a little bit more than I wanted to pay for vinyl. But then I saw a seller selling uh, this and Menace to Society at about eight pound fifty each sealed. It was take my money. I didn't even have to bid anybody. I didn't have to fight anybody off to get it. They were literally throwing them at me like frisbees. And um, I was happy to catch. So, Menace to Society, originally, what, 1983, I think? I may be wrong with that one. Uh, that seems a bit early, doesn't it? Uh, so this is part of the Metal Blade uh, Originals uh, series. What was the date on that one? Was that Yeah, I think that's just the copyright for pretty much when Metal Blade started. Um, I remember that cover from the 80s and I always kind of uh, liked the look of it and also the ridiculousness of it. I wonder why in a post-apocalyptic world everyone has to wear shin guards. Um, but uh, not as big a fan as this as the, uh, the first album. Uh, oh, both of them do come with posters, by the way. I'm not going to open them. They are just... Uh, 
reproductions of the, the, the covers, you know, the standard map of the book, that was very fair. Uh, again, pictures from the era and the lyrics on the other side. And again, on the black wax uh, polyline sleeve, perfectly, perfectly produced. Um, two more left. I couldn't turn this one down. I think this was only about nine quid. Uh, it's something I have on CD. But uh, I do want to try and get as many as Grand Amigas albums as I can on vinyl. This is a Wolf God, their 2019 release. Really, really good album. Um, Wolf God is kind of, well, they're Swedish, but they're the heavy, slightly doom laden heavy metal, epic doom laden heavy metal. Um, absolutely, I love them. Um, so delighted to get this on vinyl as well. Um, Again, super price, uh, no frills, but it did come in a polyline sleeve because it's nuclear blast and nuclear blast know how to put a release together. But um, definitely recommend Grand Magus and Wolf Garden. I think I've got the last four or five albums now on vinyl. And last but not least, this is one I wasn't going to buy, but um, I've talked about Gert before. Now, Gert are a... Um, sludgy doomy psychedelic stonerish um band from uh, the uk um follow them on Bandcamp, and about two and a half weeks ago got an email through saying the next 10 15 copies or so of their the 10th anniversary of their debut album uh, picture disc horrendosaurus they were selling for nine pound 95 it normally goes for about 25 I think quid so um, I was gonna jump on it and see 10 years of party doom that's how they describe themselves party doom it's uh, I'd say it's light-hearted but you can't really I can't really understand the lyrics uh, but um, as pictures just go this actually sounds fantastic and to grab a copy for under a tenner uh, premium sludge I wasn't going to turn that down um, and that's it and um, let's say quite a lot but it was a uh, a significant uh, birthday of uh, sorts um, and I was blessed by uh, the generosity of friends and the family and helping me celebrate even though it was all kind of locked down and we couldn't really do what we were we were going to do anyway but you know we could do that at a later date Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this. Which ones do um, you think I should dive into further? Uh, definitely looking out for some more Lizzie Borden. A um, couple of Dio albums that I need to pick up. I think uh, Magicka and Angry Machines. They're going to be high on the want list this year. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to the guys at Contact in Blood again. Um, you guys rock. Thanks.